Ali Ma Ali. I'm a final name and a student. I've been asked to look into your eye today. Is that okay? Yeah. Can I have your name and age, please? I'm a social chatter. Are you in anything today? No. Okay, so for this examination, it will involve me shining a light in your eye, as well as putting a paper close to the eye which has dyes, which will allow me to see your eye better. If at any point in your examination you feel uncomfortable, if you can, please let me know. On general examination, the patient is examined for their general appearance, facial asymmetry, as well as any abnormalities such as periorbital swelling or redness of the eye. The plus 10 setting on the direct ophthalmoscope is used to better visualize the eyelids and eyelashes. The position of the eyelids is noted, looking bilaterally for ptosis, as well as signs such as dryness, redness, swelling and growths at the lid and the lid margin. Eyelashes are observed for their position, their presence or loss, or crusting and scaling. Some important conditions that may be encountered include blepharitis, sty, chalasian, atropian, and entropian. Be sure to wash or sanitize hands. Grab the upper lid lashes with the thumb and forefinger of one hand. Pull down at an angle of 45 degrees. The other hand pushes the upper tarsus of the lid downwards with a newly opened cotton tipped bud, at the same time gently pulling the lashes out and upwards. Hold the eyelashes against the skin while examining. Examine using the plus 10 lens of the direct ophthalmoscope. If the eyelid does not come down automatically, have the patient look up and blink. This is to be repeated on the opposite eye. Look for signs of redness, swelling, roughness, concretions and transparency which may be seen in the pictured conditions. Foreign bodies such as a speck of dirt or metal can be visualized and accessed in this area. The lower lid is retracted by gently pulling down the skin with the thumb or forefinger and exposing the inner palpebral conjunctiva. The patient is instructed to look up while the lower lid is held. Again, the plus 10 setting on the direct ophthalmoscope is used. Inspect for redness, swelling, roughness and concretions, some of which can be seen in such conditions as pyogenic granulomas and retention cysts. The lower fornix may also demonstrate elevations in the form of follicles or papillae which can be a feature of viral or chlamydial conjunctivitis. The examination of the conjunctiva is continued bilaterally, noting the appearance of hyperemia, hemorrhage, foreign body, or even benign growths such as pterygium. Some examples of pathology are pictured. The sclera is examined for the color, as well as the presence of thinning and inflammation. Abnormalities may be seen in such conditions as scleral nevi, acquired melanosis, scleral swelling, and scleromalacia. Examine the cornea bilaterally for irregularity, scars, hyperemia, and haze. Lightly wet a dye strip with an eye drop. In this case, alkane is being used. The patient can be warned that it may cause blurry vision afterwards. Gently dab the strip onto the conjunctiva of the lower lid. Have the patient blink to spread the dye out over the cornea. The lights are dimmed and the cornea is examined under the cobalt blue filter of the direct ophthalmoscope. Identifiable pathology includes corneal scars and dendritic ulcers. The pen torch lies in the same plane as the eye. In the case of a deep anterior chamber, the iris lies flat and the whole iris will be illuminated. In the case of a very shallow anterior chamber, the iris lies forward, blocking some of the light and very little of the iris is illuminated. Okay,